while this is a very messy step and I should be wearing gloves, this is probably the most satisfying step because I am one step closer to planting my favorite vegetables. And it's an excuse to get a really good manicure. Let's be real. I'm Tamisha Porsche, a woodworker and a lover of all things DIY. I explore subjects, get inspired, and then I show you how you can design and build beautiful woodworking projects. This is Weekend Woodworking. Today I'm gonna to show you how easy it is to build a beautiful raised garden bed. This bed design is perfect for the backyard or a deck. Come along and I'll show you how I explored the world of gardening, met some amazing farmers, and got inspired to design and build this raised garden bed. Before I started this project, I really didn't know a lot about gardening or raised garden beds. So I did what I always do before I start building something, explore, ask questions, and get inspired. So my first stop before I design and build the raised garden is to visit a beautiful local organic flower farm called Butterbee Flower Farm. I really don't know what to expect, but I'm super excited. Hi, I'm Tamisha. I'm Laura Beth, so nice to meet you. Are you ready to go? I am. So we mostly grow designer quality flowers that are hard to find at the big wholesaler because we're local, so we want people to be able to enjoy all the things that locally grow in Maryland. This is a high tunnel, which is basically a very casual greenhouse. And in the high tunnel, we can grow things just a lot more safely than we could outside because it doesn't rain in here. Well, I just have to say that this place is absolutely amazing and beautiful. When I knew I was coming here, I actually found your Instagram. Oh, thanks. And I will tell you that I became a little bit of an Insta stalker. You're sweet, <laughs> thank you so much. Can you explain what this, it looks like, like a trellis on the ground. If you're growing cut flowers, most things require a trellis. Be prepared to put a trellis on parts of the raised bed. I actually don't know how I want to water my garden. Do you have any advice on how to do that? What we do is drip irrigation. We use this tape, which is just basically like a hose that has microscopic holes in it. And when we turn on our water, then the drips come very slowly out of this hose. Would you think that it's better for the garden to be on the ground or raised up? If it's a raised bed that's on some kind of table, for example, then you don't have to bend over when you're gardening, right? And that's really convenient. So if your back is hurt or if you're yeah. building a bed for your grandmother, a raised bed is really thoughtful and probably the right call. However, plants will grow better with deeper soil, of course. It's not that you're not gonna have success in your raised bed on top of a table, but in the ground, of course, the plants will be able to grow into the ground. 10 inches is the minimum depth you'd want for any garden. And the reason for that is because you can imagine as roots are growing, they need space, right? If a carrot hits the bottom of a raised bed, it's not gonna grow very much and you're gonna have really stubby carrots. So now that I know a ton more about flowers, now it's time to learn a little bit about vegetables. And I know just the farm to visit. So part of the reason why I'm creating a raised bed garden is because I want to know where my vegetables are coming from. And what better way to know where my vegetables are coming from than to grow them myself in my own backyard. So Stuart, tell me about Real Food Farm. Well, we're here to serve the community and grow food for people who need it. We also train AmeriCorps members on how to grow food and just become more employable in the future. With the help of volunteers, we distribute food a little everywhere. Can you tell me a little bit about CSA? A CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. Customers give us a large sum of money in the winter when we're really lean, but then once a week, spring through fall, we'll give them a bag of vegetables, and so we kind of share our abundance in return for them helping us out in the winter time. I got a little bit of everything planted in here. I have a marigold, some basil, some tomatoes, and some spinach. So you said marigold. Marigold is a flower. Yep, I love marigolds. They attract uh, beneficial insects and their roots trap nematodes, which sometimes eat the roots of plants. 
Stuart, these are your raised bed gardens. Can you tell me a little bit about how you water them? I've used a bunch of mulch that keeps water in the soil and you can just kind of poke your finger in there and you can tell if it's wet, if it sticks to your finger. Oh yeah. You don't need a water. So the key to keeping the soil moist is putting a layer of mulch over it. I love using mulch. Oh wow, that's a really great tip. I noticed that your trellis is a piece of um, nylon type material. Uh -huh. Does it matter what material the trellis is made out of? No, anything that you have on hand. People use uh, tomato cages, people use metal fencing, anything can really work. I've been reading a lot about the type of material that I should use for my raised bed garden. What would you recommend? I would recommend untreated wood. If you're growing your own food to be healthy. You better keep those chemicals out of your growing medium. I just love the mission of Real Food Farm and I love what it does for the community. And I think I got some really great ideas on how I can develop my raised bed garden. Now it's time to source some materials. All right, let's go. So we are here at one of my favorite places for sourcing salvage and secondhand material, Second Chance in Baltimore. It has literally anything that you could possibly think to find. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of Second Chance? Sure, we uh, started about 20 years ago. Our mission was to train people who are returning citizens coming back from periods of incarceration and give them a second chance. And around you, you see all kinds of materials that are also getting a second chance. As we walk through the warehouse, you're gonna see uh, all different types of materials that come through donations. These are, in many cases, historic elements that aren't being re reproduced anymore. In other cases, they're just things that are able to be repurposed and reused. I am tackling the process of building a raised bed garden. Mm -hmm. And I want to incorporate um, reclaimed materials and something different. Well, there's lots of different here, so you're gonna be in the right place. So Mark, I wanna use wood for my raised planter that doesn't have a lot of chemicals in it. Can you tell me a little bit about the old growth lumber that you have here? Sure. Today's dimensional lumber, it doesn't really hold up that well for your project. Old growth lumber comes from, obviously, older houses. The trees grew a long time ago. Uh, they grew slower, so they were denser. They were harvested a long time ago, so now they're very dry. So if you're trying to go natural, no chemicals, um, you are gonna uh, end up with many choices. And an interesting fact, Tamisha, is that uh, old growth lumber is actually the true dimension lumber. So a two by four in old growth lumber is two inches by four inches. In today's two by four, it's one and a half inches by three and a half inches. So like anything, like the cereal in your box, it's gotten smaller and it's the same size box. It's called the same thing, but we all know it's smaller. So I'm gonna grow some things in the garden that I think will require a trellis. I'm thinking maybe a window or a headboard or even a ladder. I don't know. Let's see what we can find. I love this headboard. It's metal, so it would work really great outside and it's super interesting and it looks like garden art. So for the raised bed garden, I know I wanna use old growth lumber. It's not treated, it's super durable, Many of these pieces are 100 to 150 years old. I know it's gonna look good. Sometimes I design something completely and then I go find the material. Other times I do the opposite. With this garden bin, it's a combination of both. This time I knew roughly what I wanted to make and after learning about flowers and vegetables, and learning some pro tips from real farmers, I started to get some ideas and the bed design started to take shape. Lastly, I need to sit down and actually design the bed on paper. Yes, I still use pen and paper to make my designs. I like to sketch it out, tweak it, then clean it up by putting it into the computer and making a 3D model. So after getting inspiration and learning a ton of gardening and design tips, I've decided on a three-tiered garden bed with an antique headboard as a trellis. This design will sit on the ground to allow me to grow larger vegetables with deeper roots, but it will be tiered so I can easily reach the top levels without bending over too much.
So now that I have all of my materials, before I go and make any cuts, the first thing I need to do is identify where I'd like to place my raised garden bed. Ideally, I'm looking for an area in my yard that's relatively flat because it's really hot out here and I'm really not trying to level any sort of ground. Time to make some cuts and make a garden bed. I'm gonna be using old growth redwood for the posts and old growth oak for the sides and the front. When you're using old growth lumber, you wanna take into consideration that not every edge will be completely straight. So you want to make sure that you cut a straight edge on the sides before you measure out the actual size of the piece of lumber. I like to mark on the side of the wood the actual measurements. This helps me identify the pieces when I go to put it together. And remember when picking up old growth wood that has a lot of splinters, you want to wear your gloves. I don't wear my gloves when I'm cutting, largely because it can be a risk when using a saw. But whenever I'm moving the wood, I like to wear my gloves. When I'm marking my cut line, I like to use a chalk marker. The thinner, the better. Because if your line is too thick, you may over or undercut. And when you're placing it along the fence of the miter saw, you wanna place it along the straightest side. I'm gonna cut two four by four pieces for the two back and front posts. So the reason we're gonna notch out the bottom of these posts is because it's actually gonna sit on the top of the two by 12 and on top of the middle two by eight. So now that we've identified where the raised bed garden will go and we've made our cuts, now it's time to assemble this garden. For the assembly, I'll be pre-drilling all of the holes because we're dealing with really, really old wood and it's really dry. To reduce the likelihood that it might split, it's best to pre-drill your holes. So the first step when assembling the raised garden bed is you wanna attach the front and the back posts to the bottom side panels. Now it's time to attach the two side panels using the 55 inch two by 12 bottom ends, which is basically the back and the front of the planter. So I'm screwing in the front panel or the bottom end of the front panel to one of the side posts. And one of the things I have to consider since I'm actually using screws on both sides, I wanna make sure that the screws don't intersect. Oh, this is actually a pretty good size. It's different when you see it in your head versus when you see it in person. Now it's time to add the middle side to the raised planter. And we're gonna do that by attaching each side to the back post and then putting in place one of the four top and middle posts that we cut earlier. Putting this raised bed garden together is sort of like building a log cabin. There's a lot of old wood with a lot of weird shapes. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add the end, middle, and front. We are in the final stretch. We are going to now add the two side panels, followed by the back and front for the top tier. I'm really loving this rustic look. I realized that I need a trellis because I wanna grow tomatoes. And I also think I might wanna grow peppers. But I didn't want my trellis to just be any old piece. I wanted something that represented a bed because I'm making a raised bed garden. So I'm gonna attach this headboard to the raised garden bed with some bolts. But you can also use some really thick wire and drill a hole through the side post and wrap it around the headboard. This is a very satisfying step because it means that I am one step closer to planting my favorite fruits and vegetables. I got some really great advice from Stuart from Real Food Farm, where he recommended that you add a layer of mulch over the soil to maintain the soil's moisture level. So per the advice of Stuart and Laura Beth, I've decided to mix my flowers with my veggies because it attracts important pollinators like bees and butterflies, and it also helps deter little pesky little things that might try and eat my vegetables before I can. So in my bed, my flowers and my veggies are living right next to each other. As far as irrigation goes, this is not nearly as massive as the garden that Stuart or Laura Beth have. So 
I'm gonna go with the old fashioned, the good old fashioned watering can. Because honestly, this is all I need. I'm good with this. Now this is more like it. I'm so happy with how this turned out and I cannot wait to see all my flowers and veggie grow. Tomato. Tomato. And then we got basil. Basil. I learned so much exploring the farms and chatting with Laura, Beth, and Stuart. And I hope you did too. I feel way more confident in growing flowers and veggies in my own new beautiful raised bed garden. So go out and have fun building your own bed.